we are going to have play time until about 2.50, which gives you all 30 minutes to kind of explore. You get to be little young Harry Potter now trying to be wizards with this thing. Um, remember, as you get to, to saving your project and actually running the reports, don't name it test. Come up with something else so you can find it later. Um, and as you play and experiment with this, we want your feedback on usability, the content, the reports, and the overall impression. So as you are experimenting, you are likely to need help, which is fine. Um, we would like to encourage folks to use the chat, like the public chat. Don't just send Michael or Amy or somebody a direct message, um, but use the public chat to ask those questions because then as other people are having them, they can look for those answers in the chat as well. Um, also invite you to keep your Zoom window open and you can just verbalize those questions too. If you want to just jump in and play, hit mute. <laughs> and you don't have to listen to any of the conversations that's going to go on during the playtime, but feel free to keep it on in the background. Um, so if you do need help, you can just ask. Um, you can put it in chat if that's easiest or you can um, just verbalize it. And um, Michael and Amy and the rest of the CNHP folks will um, kind of address those as they can. Does that make sense for what we're gonna do? Yes, for me. <laughs> okay, good. So um, uh, there have been unanswered questions in chat. I am tracking those. Um, I'll ask our CNHP folks to kind of tick those off and answer them as they can in the chat. Um, but we want to give you this time to go ahead and log in. Um, we do ha expect a little bit of a lag just because of server space that you all are all logging in right now, running these reports. It might take it a little bit more time. Um, so be patient with the site if it's a little bit overwhelmed with trying to accommodate. Um, but just want to invite you to jump in, mess around with different reports you might be able to make it make, look at parcels of land that are dear to your heart for one reason or another and find out what's there on the ground. Um, and we'll just kind of be sitting here in the background to answer questions via chat or, um, or with Zoom um, as you prefer. I'll put up this slide again that shows those myth different methods. Carrie, I, I had a thought too. Oh, yeah, that, um, we, uh, Michael just mentioned the return on investment stuff and uh, talked about uh, Dr. Seidel's work and wondered if we wanted to give him the floor if he wants to tell us any more about where alternative valuation is headed or if he wants to just say read my next paper. Um, <laughs> I wonder <laughs> since I'm just thinking about our different users that are on the call and the different working group members um, that might be a, a niche of folks that are really interested in that ROI piece. Um, perhaps let's let's wait and see how many questions are coming out about that because um, I don't want to be a distraction for the other folks that are uninterested in such critical work. <laughs> I have a question too for you, Carrie. Did we want to verbally answer any of these questions or did you just want us to type questions um, into if the chat? If they're easy to answer in chat, go ahead and do it in chat just so we limit the amount of um, airspace good. we're taking up. But if you if you see something that's just easier to talk through, by all means, answer it that way. So Michael, Kerry, David, I, I can't get to the site. That's frustrating. Were you able to follow the link that we set? The, the ertcodev.natureserve.org? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I may have an issue on my own end. So <laughs> let me check. Is anyone that. else not able to use the site right now? Because uh, we did up the resources on the development server and it'd be really good to know if anyone else is having problems. I can't get in either. Oh no. Uh oh. It says forbidden. Forbidden. Ooh, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, let me, uh, let me just take a look here and see what's going on. This won't be an issue on the production side and our developer, it opens for me, uh-oh. Um, let me open it in a, a new uh, private session. You know, it, it did take me a while to get a password. Um, a well, but we we provided the password and the user account you're supposed to sign in with in the chat. It's CNHP at Call of State that everyone should be logging in with and the password in the chat everyone should be using. Oh. Does it require you to use a specific browser, Mike? No, uh -uh. it should work. And I've used it in Chrome, Edge, Internet Explorer, Firefox. I don't have Safari installed, but um, I've been able to use it in all of the most common browsers, except I, I'm 
hopefully a Mac person out there can tell me it also opens in. I, I'm on a Mac and using Firefox and I was just able to get in now. So make sure if you're copying and pasting um, the addresses um, or and then the name and the password that you're not getting extra spaces in there. Sometimes that is a problem. Are you having any luck yet for Mindy? I have to go back in and sign into the CNHP one. Okay. Yeah, the user accounts will allow you to create them if you do create them. Um, unfortunately, it will uh, not be enabled to do any projects or anything. So the only account that will actually work to create projects is the CNHP at Color State account that we created for today's meeting. And it will remain active for you to keep playing with that same login throughout the weekend too. So um, you'll, you'll have the rest of the week and through the weekend. So um, not to worry. Are folks who were not successful before getting in now or still stuck? Still stuck, it looks like. Um, double check, I think when I, when it was denying me at first, I think I had, I think I had copied a space at the beginning of the email address or maybe at the end. Um, so maybe just make sure if you're copying and pasting that, that you're only getting the, like that you're not getting some leading spaces or following spaces. Yeah, oh, good. I'm seeing reports that some people were able to submit projects. Um, so it does look like quite a few people have already submitted. Um, Lindsay, what were you going to add? It sounded like you had an update. <laughs> oh, just for whatever reason, when I was playing with it earlier, I did have to type in the password. And I, I think I was careful not to grab spaces, but you might just try that. Who knows why? Okay. That's a really good suggestion. Thank you. I've had that very same issue. Um, and and Mindy, I see you had a question on how do you start a project? It's going to be the create project button just right on top of the map and then you zoom in. Were you able to get past that hurdle? Uh, I was law. I had created my own account. I'm so sorry. Oh, that, duh, duh, duh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure everyone was able to actually yeah. get in. But yeah, okay. No, I'm busy signing into the correct account. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up and let you do that. <laughs> Eric, how are you doing? I, I think I'm having a personal problem, Dave. I don't think this is on your end. <laughs> so. I have great sympathy for that too, but there's only so much we can do to help. <laughs> yeah, you know, going for hikes, it's really helpful to me. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I know you guys well enough that I will be able to get it at some point. <laughs> yeah, actually, that definitely is in the plan. <laughs> Deb, have you had any luck getting in now? No. Still not? Forbidden. Forbidden. <laughs> if you'd like to share your screen with us, I could take a look at it and other people could turn down the volume while we troubleshoot it. What do you think, Carrie? Uh, that's fine with me. I think we might need to... Yeah. Of course, if you want to share your screen with us, it's not required. Uh, oh, sorry, this is Austin, same problem. I'm forbidden. <laughs> so tinkering. I mean, if we share one screen, that's cool. I mean, I'm just, I'll keep tinkering. Um, I got in fine. I got in pretty easy. Oh, good. Could there be a limited number of people that can get in? No, there should not be any limit at all. So it may be a user error or it may be a technical problem. So if, if someone that's having the issue, I'd be happy to see if it's on our end or if there's something I can do to help them navigate more correctly to this site or something like that. Or we can do that individually later as well, um, whatever people want. Michael, are you okay with me sharing the login information with Shippo? Um, yes, again, this account will only work through uh, the weekend and we're gonna be adding in more data than after that. So um, it, 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 it probably, I think would be preferential for those of us at CS, CNHP if before you, maybe we could have our quick chat with them and, and sort of orient them and provide them that info um, so that they hear it from the horse's mouth as it were. But if you think it'd be better to send it directly to them now just so they can get a sneak peek and you don't think it'll overwhelm them and scare them off or anything, then by all means. But uh, I guess, yeah, take that under your own advisement, what you think's best. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll follow your lead uh, for now. I'll just wait until you get a chance to speak with them directly. This um, platform is not unlike Shippo's uh, system called Compass. 
also built on Esri, also uh, sort of like the same UI. Um, so this is not an unfamiliar technology to them. Great. Thank you so much for working with them for us. I think that's going to be a really great added value for folks in this tool if they can get at some of those data. You might have noticed that we just piped in the historical places geo service from the national database. That's the non-sensitive stuff, but um, that's all the cultural data is just visualization. It's not in the reports yet. And we'd love to, whatever they're comfortable with, um, integrate that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to help. I don't think this is going to be a hard sell once they see it and once they see the, the vision and the value behind it. Great, thanks. So I'm, like I'm seeing comments in chat that there might be something with a firewall or um, an but, IT restriction at WAPA. Yeah. Hmm. It, Weird. it seems, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how those things work. It's interesting the message is forbidden. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, if I could see a screen share of someone still, okay. that would be I'll really helpful. Mine. I'll show you mine. Sweet, that would be great. Thank you. Let me, I'm not sure. I'll stop sharing. Um, okay. Dave, you might need to make some more folks co-hosts so okay. they can share. So that's Blair, right? Are you putting yours up? Sure. Thank okay. you. Thank I'll you. find you in the list here and, and I'll co make you a co-host. Okay. We have kind of a lot of people in this meeting. So I'm <laughs> that's a good thing. And Brian Maggie has a question here too that we could work on while we get Blair's screen up here. Okay, let me pull that up. A lot of people are having the over and over question about um, not being able to finish drawing the polygon. Double click to complete the polygon. So with your left click, double click to complete the vertices. Um, if it, I don't know if it's just being a little buggy with a lot of people submitting lines at the very same moment. It's kind of like a Okay, here we go. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, so you're not even getting to the website at all, mm -hmm. okay. And if you copy that address, do you have, what browser are you in? Um, Chrome. So do you have a, um, like the built-in browser for your computer? If you put that into the other browser, do we have the same problem? Yeah, I can try my other browser, Explore. Okay, great. I do have, Two five. I do have a McAfee and Norton, so between the two going, it could be a that problem. might be. I don't know why it would trick it. The, the trip it. That's really interesting. Um, and you have clicked refresh, I assume. <laughs> What's that? Oh, you okay. have clicked refresh on that, like a Control F five to make a hard refresh. Let's see. You're on Windows, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So should I try my other one? My sure. All right. Let me, I might yep. jump out and then I'll come back in. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So my question is, Mindy, um, how my my project is pending. Will it send me a note when it's ready? Oh, oh like it won't come to me, right? Because right, it will in the future when you have your own account. Otherwise, okay. just go in in about five ish minutes after you hit submit. Okay. Um, and, and you'll be able to click your link and see if the results are available. We'll just have to click the link to check today. Otherwise, okay. you would get an email notification. Um, the CNHP then, general account is going to get a lot of those today. Yeah, so it says project status, it says saved. That's just the, that the report was saved. Uh, it doesn't like it. Doesn't yeah, if you go in, in, if you go in, it should uh, um, actually, uh, it'll, it'll say, uh, if you want to share your screen, I can show you where it is. If you want to just have us look at it with you real quick. Well, I'm looking at it. It says Jewel, mine is Julesburg project, and I just click on it, and then I open it. It still says pending. Um, okay, yep, that's exactly that means it's still processing, and that okay. pending will be replaced with links to all the reports as soon as it's ready. But why, why on the outside where it has the list of all of them, where it says project status, why, why doesn't it say pending there? Um, you know, that's a, that's a great suggestion. Um, the project status is saved and that this, the project was saved is the status they're reporting there. Um, we could ask the developers if they could just add that to this view of uh, that if, if I, you know, that you're the first person to suggest that, but I, I can see your logic. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a good suggestion. Uh, Eric, did your, you see that same forbidden thing? On yours? No, I was getting a, uh, I think mine was a firewall issue, Dave. It seemed like it was a, it was a much different um, screen than that. I can, 
I could screen share that for you too, but it seemed like mine was a, like I said, it seemed like a personal issue rather than that. That's okay. Uh, well, you know, Eric, I, I'd be willing to work directly with you. That's um, fine. Okay. Yeah. And, and so I, it's good to know this. It, it may be how they've configured the development site and, you know, we've, we've only had the people at CNHP test it and hadn't experienced this, but this is really part of why it's great to have a working group is we can report this feedback to the developers at NatureServe and let them know that people are getting 403s and everything we can see they're doing is correct. And what would be tripping someone's home security to stop the site from loading or work security? Because I, maybe it's only a development site that does that. But. Yeah, and Rick Schneider's on the call with us here too, so he can see this happening. Oh so yeah, that's great. So this is Blair, and this is on my Microsoft Edge, and it says forbidden also. So okay, well that's good enough for now. Thank you so much, Blair. I just really wanted to see it, and, and uh, so thanks. Thank you. So Michael, uh, this is Desmond. I'm trying to. Uh, I've got the layers that I want, and I want to view like the trails, the soils, and the protected area layers. Now it's all showing up on my map. But um, some of the landmarkers, like the text for showing you where, like what city you're in, those are kind of like blurred behind the rest of the layers. And I've got it pretty much like as far up the chain as you can get it. Um, is there a way that you can like bold that or have the text in darker, like darker font? Um, I, I would love to see your screen just to, again, to kind of see what you're looking at. Yeah, totally. Thank you. All right, so there it is. And what I'm wondering is I want, uh, like I moved it down just for like- Oh, seconds. okay, I do have an idea. Have you tried the transparency settings? Transparent, I haven't. Okay, yet. so um, go ahead and one of the layers that's blocking everything, like so let's look at the, um, you know, potential conservation areas as a blocky thing. When you see that little arrow that pops out, click uh -huh. that and then you can change the transparency over more. And Perfect. That's going to make it less transparent. So if you go to the right, you'll see more stuff under it. So whatever layer that is, that uh, yeah, and then see those things. You can yep, you're okay. getting it. So so, the, so you can adjust the transparency to uh, get through those. So so trails you probably don't want transparent at all because they're just short. So I would leave them like at zero. And then what's this other layer that's on that's uh, the soils. That's the one that looks like it's really chunking out your map to me. So okay. turn the transparency on that way down. Yeah, now you uh, see what I'm getting at. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. Sweet, so yeah, that, that would be my recommendation on how to handle that problem. Thanks for sharing your screen so we could all learn. For sure, I appreciate your help. Michael, this is Minnie. When when I create the report at the bottom, when I you know when you scroll down through the different options mm -hmm. and it says you can only pick one type of report. Um, Where does it say that? Well, I lo I lost my report. Um, I I guess I yeah I don't know what we're talking about with the only okay. one kind. When I'm naming my report, when I'm just about to submit it. Oh okay. And and you scroll down through there. Um, and I actually changed the CNHP name to mine. So I that's don't know fine. where that I don't know where that's that's gonna go. But um and I don't have the screen right in front of me, but um but there there was an option to say what kind of report do you want? Do you want a conservation restoration report? Do you right. want you can you need to pick like I was saying the project report, project review report on everyone right now. Um, in order to pick the other two, just because of the current development state of the site. So as long as you click a project review report, then you can also pick either conservation uh, or, or a return on investment or all three. And I was just okay. thinking for our purposes today, just click all three buttons and that way you'll get all three reports. Okay, great. CNHP folks, if you wanna scan, there's some um, questions in the chat that I can't yeah. answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see uh, Amy is answering a bunch of them here. She, but. Okay, cool. I saw she had popped in several. I was just looking back up higher and there were still some remaining ones. Yep. Yeah, Brian. Brian's question I was just going to uh, address. Yeah, so there was a question about what type of report you were looking for. 
if you selected project review, does that go to CNHP staff for project review? No, um, actually nothing is going to any of us. The project review is the type of report. We originally called it an environmental review report, but there was a need that not suggest it had regulatory implications. So we've changed the name. Every other installation across the country calls them that, but since we're not a regulatory agency at CNHP, we've elected to call that a project review report. And uh, there's, there's no workflow to send it to anyone right now. But like I was saying, we could create a workflow, like say you folks at CPW, want to have a specific project type for one of your 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 normal duties and you want the people to now use this tool as part of that you could get an alert and you you could have that you know access to that through that and all that workflow built up but we have not developed any of that for cpw because you all didn't think you needed it yet but i just keep bringing it up because I, I have a feeling one of these days someone's gonna think that's a really neat idea i would if i i was reviewing people's stuff to be able to have all that automatically done Michael, do you think it would make sense for the folks that are um, still having that forbidden? Should we um, crowdsource? I don't know what kind of information might be useful for NatureServe. Um, if we think it's a firewall thing, if it's a browser, I have no idea what would be causing that. But um, I think it would be really helpful if, if people are willing to be contacted um, by the developers. I, I, I've worked a lot with Blair over the years, but I don't want to speak for you, Blair, but if you'd be willing to, uh, uh, if, if they have questions of like, uh, you know, what, what's your home system look like or whatever, would we be able to have them contact you later? Because this is going to be outside of Amy Nice purview. Yeah. I, it could well be just the stress test and random people are getting cut off because of it almost being like a denial of service attack on a development site when 50 people all try to use it at the exact same time. And we mm -hmm. thought we'd turned up the resources enough to avoid those kinds of issues. So without talking to the folks at NatureServe that are the actual hardcore developers of the uh, application that lives on Amazon, it's, it's I think probably collecting whatever info we can is helpful at this point. Okay, Michael, I can try to do, to get into this tomorrow and then I could check, I can email you whether I was able to get in when there's less people using it. Is that, a, is that would that be helpful? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me put my email into the chat. And if anyone else is having problems and wants to follow up with me, I'd be happy to be the point person on this okay. and uh, cool. report um, to uh, NatureServe. We'll let, and of course, like Dave keeps saying, we've got someone from NatureServe on the call with us now too. So I'm sure they're taking notes, um, but we'll let the developer know at NatureServe. And then um, anyone who wants to email me for follow-up, please feel free. And um, we'll, we'll go ahead and see if we can get this fixed or at least know why it's happening and make sure it doesn't on the live site. Okay, I'll email you by early afternoon tomorrow, Michael. No, oh, thanks so much, Blair. You rock. So anyone else who is still getting that forbidden message, if you wanna um, email Michael and just give him your basic, I mean, your email address, <laughs> then he can try to help um, troubleshoot and we can figure out if it, if it was just dumb luck that you had bad timing on it or if there's something consistent that they can um, fix. Thank you. Michael, I'm having a different issue. Um, I uh, just looking at it right now. Um, my ad resources is grayed out. I can't click on it and I don't even have an option to create a project. Are you signed in as CNHP at callestate.edu? No. You have to be signed in as, okay. yeah, you won't have any access because we've only set up that account to be able to do stuff. Okay, cool, thanks. Cool. Yep a question about the buffer go for it Linda. Um, so i i got my report and it's lovely but it in, i didn't mean to set a buffer and i'm wondering if there's like a default that it created like maybe a yes. two mile buffer yes i'm sorry i didn't make that uh clear enough earlier and i'm glad you brought it up because probably other people are confused too so there, by project type, there is a buffer associated with each project type you click, and we have just made a universal two-mile buffer. Um, generally, in CNHP data request land over many years, we've always recommended that people have a project site include at least a two-mile buffer because wildlife moves and plants move, so and not everything's been surveyed, so that gives you kind of the contextual look. 
but um, it is it is burned in that you will in the project review report always as of right now you're going to get two miles until we adjust the project types for different buffers which maybe we'll work with parks and wildlife and determine some things can have shrunken up buffers or or other partners or maybe there'll be specific project types for like maybe NRCS wants to do their project practices and and they have very specific needs for their practices of like that should only be a 400 foot buffer or whatever we can do that um, so, and if you need a larger buffer than two miles, the way around that would be is just to create a buffer around your project site in the creation stage and that modify part I was showing you, and you could just buffer a point to, you know, whatever you needed and then just know another two miles is going to get tacked on. So there's some, this tool is so extensible. There's always like 10 different ways to do one thing. So if I'm like drawing my area, mm -hmm. I draw my polygon, for example, and I go into the, um, where was it the options or something and I changed the buffer to zero, it's still gonna give me two miles right now? Yes, yeah. Okay. But okay. the results above that table are no buffer and just in the project site. Um, okay, I will look So at you that. get both. So table, let me pull up the results and I can share them here real quick. I just closed the meeting controls just a sec. Oh, I see, yeah, it says, within project area and then within two miles of project area. Yeah, so, so yeah, right. Table two is the one that are actually within. Table three are the ones um, within two. And then table four are the uh, potential based on model range maps or records with low precision. So I'm just gonna check in on time. I know some folks are forbidden <laughs> and can't get in at all. So they're ready to move on. Um, and other folks are probably still happily playing. Is, is just one more minute enough time for those of you that are in um, to get enough play done to give us some feedback in just a few? Or do we need a little bit more play time? My, my two projects are still both pending. I haven't seen them yet. But okay, I'm, but, I'm, haven't. but I'm looking at Lindsay's, so. <laughs> I, yeah, be careful what your projects are because you all can see each other's now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I just wanted to see a final report, so it's kind oh, of interesting. Hang on, we've got somebody who's calling in on a number. Go ahead. Hi, this is Amy. I had gotten disconnected, so I <laughs> probably don't show up myself anymore. Um, but I'm just wondering if it would be helpful for people that can't get on to start to show some examples of creating reports while while we're waiting for the other folks to finish up. Uh, yeah, I wonder, um, maybe Michael or Amy, could you email some of the sample reports to the whole group? Sure, um, I'll create the ones, I'll send the ones I just created with the group if that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, that way at least they have something to look at while the other folks are waiting for their reports to be finished. Right. Okay. That's a good idea. I'll go ahead and grab those now. Great. So if you are a person who wasn't able to access and maybe you've stepped away from the computer entirely and are going and walking around the block, but <laughs> if you weren't able to get in at all, um, check your email in just a minute here and Michael will send you a report so you can at least um, provide some feedback on that. And the big picture feedback of I can't get in is well taken. <laughs> um, we'll collect the feedback we can from you for now. Other folks having strong feelings about needing more time or being ready to continue on? All right, either everybody's walking around the block because they're tired of being forbidden <laughs> or <laughs> we can go on. Um, I, as folks are checking their email to see what the heck these reports look like. I'm still downloading them FYI too. It's okay, good. that's fine. Well, we have feedback plus break coming up next. So we can um, use that accordingly. So we're gonna use Menti which is a cool new tool. Well, it's probably not new to all of us, but for me it was um, that Sarah told me about. Um, so we're gonna collect your feedback that way. I just put a link in the chat um, and I will share my screen and folks, in case folks have stepped away. Um, there are 
essentially 10 questions and we are trying to collect your feedback on different aspects of the tool. Um, one is usability. Obviously, if you are forbidden, it's hard to provide feedback on that piece. Um, but then we want you to think about the contents, the reports, and your overall impression. Um, so the, the information that we get from you through this Menti tool will be a start of the discussion um, that we'll come back and have together. So our next chunk here, we have our 2.15 time that's not accurate at all anymore. Um, we're gonna have you, give you a chunk of time now to give your feedback and take a break. And we will review your combined feedback starting at 3.15. So that gives folks um, right around 25 minutes, um, not quite 25 minutes, but to do the feedback and then also take a break. Does that make sense? Um, so the link, to start providing the feedback is in the chat. You'll see there's 10 slides, about 10 questions. Um, it should be pretty self-explanatory. So submit those responses and then take a break. And we will see you back here at 3.15 um, to discuss that feedback, um, collect folks' final thoughts, et cetera. So hopefully- I am, Just real quick to let everyone know, I am on the verge of hitting send on what will be the three project reports that we did together with me and then the layers list that we discussed earlier in case folks didn't get that. Um, and I'm gonna just send it to the entire group that was on the invite. Great. If you invited somebody else, please make sure you forward that along. Um, so if there was somebody that wasn't on the initial invite list that, um, from your organization or otherwise that you've added, you could um, make sure to forward that on, especially if um, both of you were not able to get in. Okay, um, so again, the link um, for that mentee is in the chat, follow that link, and at 3.15, we'll come back together to review that feedback and discuss it further. Um, reports will be in your inbox if you weren't able to access anything else. So you can see on the screen overall, um, the tool scoring high. It looks like the usefulness is, you know, within a tenth of a point there, um, the, the highest ranked element that people are excited for that. Um, and that the user-friendly and comprehensible reports are the, the lowest ranking, but all still relatively high. So positive feedback on those. Um, let's look at some of the specifics of what's working well. Just a quick note from Michael for the crowd. Um, I had attached all three reports to the document I sent to everyone. And uh, I just got a message from Jeremy that he didn't get them all. And I had an error in Outlook. So I'm attempting to resend all three. So if you only got the one RO or the one report, I'm resending the other, uh, the email one more time, trying to get Outlook to cooperate here. Okay, I appreciate it, Michael. Thank you for everybody's patience with that when you couldn't sign in and then we didn't get all the reports. So thank you for your patience as we work through all the details. Um, it looks like as far as the kudos, people like um, the abundance of data, um, that the mapping tool is great, that it seems straightforward, um, a common interface for folks that are familiar um, with tools that look like this, the Esri-based GIS kind of stuff. Um, the ability to overlay layers, it's logical. All right, let's talk about the stumbling blocks then. <laughs> um, we, as far as what's not working well, um, people very cheerfully said I couldn't get in, <laughs> but soon enough, um, seems like there's some confusion about how to add your own data. Um, multiple people listed that it's tricky to finish the polygon, save the project, and generate a report so that that flow wasn't necessarily intuitive. It might be something that just, this is the very first time people have used it. So with more, more repetition, it'll become more fluent, but we can look at if there's design aspects of that. Um, some comments about finding the tools, maybe some pop-up box instructions, the cover page is boring, given how amazing the data is. Okay, so some suggestions to dress that up. Um, so we've got some, some specific feedback here that we will feed to the developers, but we'll, let's keep going then. Um, as far as the base layers that people most like, um, there's a mix of these. Um, you can see based on the different user groups, um, some people again weren't able to see it, but they enjoyed the ones that they did. 
I'm going to skip to things that are still missing. So this is where we might want to spend some more time um, as far as what's missing. Some people said they're not sure yet. They want more time to mess around with the tool and see. Um, roads and hill shade layers. I had a question about this. So roads, I think you can click a button to see. Is that right? But it depends on the level of maybe zooming in. Is that correct, CNHP folks? Yes, it has uh, highways, major roads, and local roads, and then mile points for the highways, but you do have to zoom in to see the mile points and the local roads. Okay. Um, just because the performance isn't good at a statewide level because they're pretty okay. data rich. Okay. And um, hill shade layers, I, this is where I am a novice. I don't know what this is talking about. Um, is that something that, you know what that means? <laughs> is that talking about like, how much shade, like the shadow that a hill casts? I have, I, I, that was one that I saw and I thought, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it makes sense to somebody else. Yeah, so um, yeah, what we I was don't... about for hill shades was um, if you have like a slope, it just shows you like um, how steep the slope is depending on the angle. Okay, Amy, did you wanna address, is there a capability or a limitation in that? No, we can definitely add a slope slope map and aspect map we could integrate some of that information uh, no problem it well, would probably be from like a 10 meter digital elevation model is that kind of in line with what you're thinking yes definitely all right lots of folks um, saying they just need some more time to see restoration priority areas water rights grouped in a similar way to the toolbox with surface water CNHP folks, pause pause here with any of these that you need clarification on, um, or if it's something that's in the tool and maybe just wasn't intuitive to find yet. Water quality info, a few other things for the watershed planning toolbox. Are those part of the suite of things that you're looking at adding with some of the other water data or wetlands data? Yeah, as far as the wetlands data goes, um, Sarah responded in the chat. If she's still on here, feel free to pipe up, Sarah. Um, but I know we're we're going to be looking at the CWIC toolbox, the Carl Wetland Information Center website and, and integrating a number of those tools. They're going to be looking at the data and getting it in a form where it can work in Codex. And we knew everyone wanted the National Wetland Inventory. So we started with that as, as our low hanging fruit. But the plan is to bring in some of those. Could you go back to the other layers real quick? I don't want to get totally bogged down a layer discussion because we have that spreadsheet going around. But uh, uh, the water rights I'm interested in, um, is there a, a publicly available non-commercial layer of water rights? I'm familiar with Water Sage that charges a, a quite high uh, annual price to be able to view that. Is there a data set that we should include that someone knows for water rights? That yeah, Michael, that's available through the Colorado Decision Support System web service, um, but we also have, you can download the data layer. So. I could definitely help you with that. And okay. um, I know in, in the toolbox, we have it displayed by water right, by surface water, groundwater, and springs. Gotcha. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm the only one that thinks that's interesting, but it'd be great to hear from the group. Great, thank you, Sarah. All right, we'll let, we'll let you email any other feedback if you want. Sure. Um, I had a question here, the PLSS section and smaller, I'm the novice. Does everybody know what PLSS stands for? Yep, that's the township range Hi. inspection. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can address that one. Um, so that is one of those data sets that's expandable. Um, and the township and range will draw statewide, but you do have to zoom in for the sections to turn on. So they are there, but you just have to be um, looking at the map at a scale of 500,000, one to 500,000 or closer for them to draw. And uh, just to go ahead and expand on the one of the reasons why that functionality could be really useful too is if you use the uh, make a project and you do it from a layer, that one, one of the methods that I showed you how you can use an existing layer, you could go in and select the actual individual sections that you wanted your request to be based on. And I know a lot of my uh, commercial clients that have done environmental review requests in the past, um, like Blair, who's on the phone, really prefer to give us the township range and section. So you could, should be able to just go in and grab the sections you want and, okay. and go from there. Okay. 
Good. Um, I had a question. There's a question here in terms of the um, city of Fort Collins natural areas, and I can see this being generalizable. Um, I'm wondering if they, um, if that's something that folks would just need to add, like work with their own GIS people to get a shape file that they could just consistently. Actually, that should be inside a COMAP, and COMAP okay. is the map of all managed lands. And Fort Collins, you all have been great partners at COMAP, and I, I think your data should be pretty close to up to date. Um, okay. There is another update coming for COMAP um, later this year. Um, due to our focus on getting codex, it's been a bit delayed, and also um, just some other other internal things that we've been working on but it's the update is going to be coming soon with all the updated easements and if there's local open space programs that have not provided an update to us for a while uh, either amy or i would be happy to help you get that data in um, so let us know if your data is not in comap and you want to view local open space because i know um, some counties we have much better coverage than others and we'd like to get that up good Good. So then another comment specifically on threatened and endangered species um, and then contact information for BLM, um, BOR, Bureau of Reclamation. Yeah. How, you know how I know these acronyms. <laughs> and Forest Service field offices. Are those not currently in the reports? Um, I feel like that's where those numbers would show up, but maybe they... They're not in the reports, um, but the... Uh... Um, we could add that to the introductory matter. That's like one of the things that we, it, part of why it's boring is we actually haven't written an introduction to the report. Okay. Um, so it, it will hopefully be much more interesting than it is now. But the, uh, um, the data layers, do they mean they want the layers to have the contact info burned in or just it, like in the introduction so that, you know, because I think we're going to have like a resources of who to contact and, you know, if you need to talk about wildlife or CPW, if you need to talk to BOR, or whatever, you know, I think we should have some kind of contact built in on 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 there at some point, but I'm not sure if people want it in the map or just like somewhere on the site or the report. I can imagine it being useful if it was at the front of the report as long as it's customized to their spatial area right like if it's a, a specific uh, district or whatever else. That's a good question. I, I wonder if we have the functionality to do that or if we'd need to pay to get that, but that sounds like a perfect way to implement that. I like that idea. That would be really helpful just to be able to know like the correct field office or whatever to contact because sometimes I spend a lot of time just making sure I'm going to the right place. Right, right. I like that feedback. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Um, so then there's some other suggestions here in terms of, sorry, I have like all my windows open on my very tiny laptop here. Um, the high priority um, habitat layer and wildfire data. So additional things that could be useful. Um, this one in yellow accessing more than just generalized CNHP occurrence, is that um, part of what will be enabled with the CPW? I should address that. That's actually an excellent question. Um, there is um, going to be some generalized level available through the map viewer, but given the sensitivity of our data and also some of the CPW internal data sets, only analysis will show those layers unless you have a privileged account like a partner login that already has a pre-existing agreement to view the data and 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 really if you want to view the data the better way to go is to go ahead and do a spatial data request from us so that you can get the geo database yourself sign the data license and use it internally through all your applications and and so um, depending upon the use case it might be better to make a spatial request but um, if you have the right partner login you would be able to view um, and that's that's part of the workflow that we're going to be developing and kind of the second part of the beta is we integrate the sensitive data from CPW so that we ensure that no one at CNHP can even see it except the people administering the site because that's our agreement with them is that it only is reflected in the results and I'm sure you all can understand that we can't be putting orchid locations and things like that all over the map or um, we're going to have a lot of uh, eBay sales and angry private landowners <laughs> real quick. Appreciate that. That's been a challenge through all of this, right? Is to making of information available, but not too available because. <laughs> all right, good. Um, this last one is all acronyms. Um, has that. So the CPW non SAM data will be those sensitive data sets that live right. behind the scenes. And uh, CPW had an internal working group. So if Matt or someone wants to take that, but we, we have already gotten a, a master spreadsheet of the data that they, their internal codex working group identified as, as being ready and also shareable for codex. And uh, we are 
for sure the SAM is available now, but we're for sure working on getting all of those layers integrated and either being reflected in reports or visualization of paint upon CPW's preference. Okay. Is there anything else as you look at that last comment in orange there uh, that seems... Um... Natural areas are, I believe, already in under special areas. If not, they will be soon. Um, National Park Service NNLs. Whoops, that's over my head. NNLs, I don't know. National Natural Landmarks. Oh, yeah, yeah. We could add yep. those. Thank you. I love those yep. things. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, same with the, so TNC Resilient and Connected Landscapes, um, Drew and I are just on the chat talking about that. We're I've gonna... been chatting with Drew about it too. Yeah, <laughs> yep. that's on the way. Yeah. And the high priority habitat layer from CPW is really important. And um, as far as I know, that one can live in here uh, when we when we get to it. Is that, do you agree with that, Matt? Or, and others? Yeah, I, I, I think, um... We can get that integrated. Um, it was not ready when we did the, the last day of delivery, so we got to go back and um, get all that together. I mean, all that's still in flux a little bit, but I think it's nailed down now. And it's gonna be okay. okay. Yeah. And this is Drew Rayburn from, from TNC. You know, for those of you not familiar with the, the RCN or the Resilient and Connected Network, it's a fairly new product that's been about 10 years in development for the entire. Uh, contiguous U.S. and what it boils down to is it's climate resiliency, both in terms of resilient sites and also connections between them. So with the RCN now being complete, uh, we want to try to bring the, that into this product and we, we will definitely find a way to get that done at some point soon. Thank you so much for that. We are thrilled about that. And I think just making a general point too, that um, CNHP definitely views this as a continually evolving iterative project. And what we've tried to do is, is you know, of course, go for low hanging fruit where possible and then work on more complicated data sets or relationships like with History Colorado to where we can get those in. And I, I my dream for this is that every year, you know, we can see new things come in or change if, if, if we have the funding and interest to do it. And, and, and it'll help this thing keep legs by keeping it fresh and kind mm -hmm. of adapting to modern conservation needs as they change. So um, please uh, pardon our dust as we don't have all the layers you want, but also realize that we want to hear what layers you want and we are doing everything we can to, and, and at the same time, we don't want to cause death by layers because at some point, you know, you come in here and it's like, God, <laughs> there's too many layers, I can't. So we have to find a happy medium too. And that's part of why you can add resources and, and um, my, a dream I have that might require some funding that um, I, I don't even think it's possible at this point, but I'd love to be able to make a report by choosing the visualization layers that I want in my report in addition to any that are behind the scenes as analysis layers. And maybe we can find some major funder that thinks that would be really handy. Um, so, you know, I mean, who knows? It just depends on what the map core can do at NatureServe and what resources and programming and funding it would take to get it to support the features we want. But the neat thing is all the states that have this are also adding features all the time. And so if Arizona goes and adds some new feature, we can get it for free. And if we go and add features from your all's impact, we can be a national model and this will roll out to other states as well. So it's really a chance for all of us to impact uh, just the, the the productivity of exchanging this data, you know, and collaborate better together. And I think that's one of the big dreams for this project too. So um, keep the ideas coming and also hopefully some patience on the really tricky ones. <laughs> Appreciate two that. Two more things we should address ever so quickly here, but the uh, natural areas, some of those are sensitive. So we'll work with CPW to get the ones up that are okay. And that'll be up to CPW. And um also mentioning that we already are a national leader by having this return on investment calculator up on Codex. No other instance of this in the country has that. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And we should thank the private lands community of Colorado for seeing the value of that and really helping provide the, the leadership and also connecting us with some key funders. Because as I mentioned, you know, we had to provide additional funding to NatureServe to add that feature. So it, it never would have been possible without the land trust community recognizing and the private lands conservation community recognizing. And Eric, who's been on the call, has been incredibly helpful. And Andy, um, who was on earlier, um, and a number of other folks. So thank you all who, who've helped us bring this because, yeah, it's, it's huge. This is something that I think other people around the country are going to be pretty excited to add to their installations too. 
Can y'all tell just how excited Michael is about all this? It's intense, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a dork. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's keep moving along. Um, we have some specific feedback about content and um, couched within some of these is the reminders. And I remember this from previous working group meetings, keeping reminding people that this doesn't replace consultations, right? That those links in the reports and everything else is, this is the the first step, not the end, right? Um, so people acknowledging that. Um, there's some other suggestions in this that it's thorough, links to NatureServe, the maps being beautiful and clear, um, and some people wanting more time to check it out. Anything that people wanna add or nuance questions as far as the reports? Okay, um, and again, we'll uh, be able to look at all these with fine detail and think about how that shapes any revisions. As far as what's missing, um, ex some explanatory text, and then we know that some of that is forthcoming. Um, dotted lines for road layers seems atypical. Okay, so thinking that that might be not the right way to visualize those, uh, the ways that the text gets lost in the map layers. So there might be an element, I'm wondering, Michael, if you change the transparency on your screen, is that by default what comes out in the report? Yes. Okay. So maybe there's some uh, some artistry <laughs> that the users are going to need to to work with there, so that the text doesn't get lost, or making sure that that text um, can come to the front um, could be overwhelming, and they won't know what to do with it. Um, so be useful keeping that in mind. Think about customization and opportunities for that, that the user can control what, what um, pieces. I'm thinking about the comments on uh, your buffer and how you might be able to adjust that. Um, thinking about a key for code, for the different codes, the cover page we know, maybe a table of contents. All right, any other nuance that you wanna discuss or add for reports? All right, let's keep going then. Anything you dislike about the appearance? Small things, lots of nothing big, pretty clean as it is. So that's good. I'll just say we definitely um, are way into adding CPW's logo on the report being a major data partner. Yeah. Um, this is just draft report form. So Matt, I'm sure we'll be talking with you soon about how to get you all where you need to be in there. Good. Good. Uh, our word cloud, as far as how you would describe it, useful is the biggest one. So hooray. <laughs> um, and comprehensive is very big, very large in there as well. So um, nice to see that, that the usefulness of it is there. I hope I think that that will help drive all the rest of it. So cheers on that. And uh, anything else you want to add? People had lots of kudos in this. Thanks. And great job. This acknowledgement that some of it still needs some baking. And that's true. What a bummer that some people couldn't even get on today. Um, but that but the uh, overall, the sentiment is is really positive and people are excited to use it in a real world setting. Uh, for the good of the people, we have that collection. I'm going to stop that sharing. We have that collection of information. We'll download it in a, a spreadsheet and, and the um, CNHP folks will be able to pour over that in detail in the coming weeks. Um, is there anything else now as you reflect on um, that feedback we have some next steps. Um, I will tell you on a logistical standpoint, um, Amy has been behind the scenes answering a million questions in chat. So if you didn't see an answer to something immediately, um, it might have gotten addressed a little bit later. So feel free to scan through there. Um, she did a great job of, of kind of tagging folks, but um, Zoom doesn't let you just search for your own name real easily in there. Um, so anyway, if you asked a question in chat, especially if it was like a basic functionality thing, um, check there and we will, um, see if we can, I know we will be able to save the chat and we'll glean through and make sure those questions got addressed. Um, so have like an FAQ coming out of this. And if anything got dropped, we'll try to answer those um, in that format. So just FYI, stay tuned for the chat Q and A <laughs> um, will be coming out. Um, and then I think, um, Michael, what's our next step for folks that weren't, that, that got the forbidden message? So um, it turns out one of our CNH peers is, has had this same issue. So we have a great test case that we can work directly with 
And um, I put my email in the chat. If anyone else had the issue, wants to follow up with me, that's great. But I think with our one CNH peer and Blair, that um, we can just take that and go to NatureServe and, and, and see what, what we need to do to troubleshoot. Okay. Um, so, um, but if anyone else wants to reach out just in general with questions, by all means, um, feel free to email Amy, Dave, or I, or, or Jeremy, or Sarah, you know, or all of us, um, depending upon your question, we'd love to keep engaged on this and, and hear your ideas and uh, issues or, or, or suggestions. Okay. So um, Mike will follow up about the, the forbidden piece <laughs> and try and troubleshoot that if it's a browser issue or firewall, whatever else, so everybody can learn from that. As far as updates and improvements, um, CNHP folks, I know this isn't completely in your control because you have to send things to um, NatureServe and there's a lag and um, you know, you're still waiting for data in some places. Um, is there anything that folks should look forward to on any specific timeline? Well, it's, we're kind of at the mercy of our partners and NatureServe. And so, I, and, and um, also a need to, um, you know, continue our internal stuff um, as well, of course. So I, I think what we're looking at now, this has been perfect, what we need to go to the next level of development. And we're gonna go away and figure out these, these private CPW layers and uh, some of the other workflow issues. And I think, you know, probably sometime around, you know, summerish we'll be at the next stage of, of getting close to wanting to flip the switch. And then we'll have a, probably a hard beta launch where um, I, I would like to see that still happen this year where, um, you know, all the, the, the added reports for kind of like what we could call mark, mark one of the site, you know, the version one of the site we could, um, call it, we'll launch it in, in, in an open access period where everyone can still use it for free to kind of get a, a flavor of it and get a feel for it to see if it'll be worth it so they don't have to pay and decide they don't want to use it for our private consultants like Blair. We'll make sure that you get some free use so that you can make sure it's going to work for you. But I don't think we want to tie ourselves down and, 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 and set your expectations um, too wildly at this point because there's a lot of things beyond CNHB's control at this point. Um, but we are dedicated to doing everything in our power to get this sucker to the next stage as soon as possible. And with your feedback today, that helps us take that step in a big way. Okay, good. So we will um, follow up with folks after did today's meeting with the chat Q&A, any troubleshooting as far as the forbidden access. Um, and then behind the scenes, the internal and partner work will continue. Uh, feedback will get incorporated um, and those data layers will be added um, and Michael, you've mentioned work, workflow development. Um, does that mean as far as maintaining it on the back end, or is that about reporting? It's a, well, it's a general workflow issue. So okay. part of it may involve um, so that now you could just pick, I only want the ROI report and I don't want to be forced to pick the report review. And so working out how, how people can pick individual reports instead of all of them. Okay. and have the tool still work and maybe the workflows on how we uh how all the different uh tiers of users work in terms of being able to view sensitive data and things like that so okay. um it, it's 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 mostly behind the scenes uh things that make all of this work for you that we need to uh do the next level of development on now that we've gotten to this stage Okay, good. And then just foreshadowing, it sounds like there will be a cost at one point um, for different levels of access. There will always be a, a certain free nature of it. It will be free until for a while, even after it's fully launched. Um, but then after that, there will be a, a pricing plan that still is a ways down the road to get worked out. Does that sound accurate? Yeah, and it's just gonna, you know, we're, we're, we're really focused on kind of following a, a much lower uh, price model than current CNHP data requests have been for like the sorts that our, our private consultants regularly do with us. So um, look for a, a more accessible fee and more information than you used to get and access 24 seven to that data. So um, for those that have been paying, you're gonna pay less and get more and get it quicker. So hopefully it'll all be worth it. And those partners that already have access to our data by virtue of funding or other projects we're working on, um, we're committed to figuring out getting you access to Codex. And that's part of the workflow question is how, how do we work with all these different groups and users to make sure it's working how we want and that we understand exactly what it's doing is what we want. Okay, and Michael, I had a question about that. So on that, topic in the beta 
sort of progress towards a, a formal launch to the world. Um, my understanding is this this group, now that you all are the experts on using Codex more than <laughs> anyone else in the whole world, um, it's you. So uh, um, I feel like we have a great opportunity to work with you as we get a version of it ready to go out to the real world that that we would like you all to, to see if you can break it first. <laughs> yeah, I think also if you have an exciting pilot idea, um, just to give you a couple examples of some we already have in the works, um, I've been talking to uh, some city of Fort Collins planning staff and even in, while the tools in beta form, we're gonna uh, slip a couple of their project reviews through it just to see how those results might work for them. And then they can kind of talk with their staff as we're going through the beta and get it ready um, to maybe even better support that decision-making process. And we, we also might be looking at um, some other partner, uh, the, uh, in particular FEMA, has contacted CNHP and is looking for resources to plan the response to the fires that we had in Larimer that were so awful this last year. And uh, we were again thinking this might be a neat way to kind of, we're gonna get them the data how we normally would, but it might be a neat way to kind of pilot this to see um, some use cases. So if you have a particularly neat one and you, you would like to get earlier access and you have a neat idea that might help us true the model, um, contact them, one of the, you know, three of the Dave or Amy or I that are the main engineers here at, or, or of course share with the Jeremy or Sarah too, and they can pass it along to us. But yeah, I, I, I think so. All right. So I, I've added to our next steps that we're inviting you all to help break the tool before launch. <laughs> so doing that uh, testing, um, bring those innovative ideas that they can mess around with and use as test projects. And that'll help to troubleshoot um, sooner than later on it. Yeah, and to just add a point of clarity to that, I think what we should do is once we're ready for everyone to have their own uh, accounts, we will first contact this group before anyone else and invite you all to go ahead and sign up and then we'll give you uh, the powers to go ahead and create reports and everything on your individual accounts as soon as that's available. And that'll be kind of a, a good way for us to do the next phase of testing. And then you'll have active accounts that you can just use. And hopefully we can just leave the development site or if we're off the development site or on the production site for that part of the beta, um, whatever. But for now, the beta site we should uh, mention has limited hours of operation due to the computer cost and everything to keep that uh, development cost as low so we can save our money for the fun stuff. Um, right now it turns off at 10 o'clock, but it has been traditionally on from about uh, 830 to 9 to 6 o'clock at night. Um, I think I'll go ahead and ask NatureServe to just leave it on to 10 through Monday since you all are getting in. So we can have those kind of extended hours for y'all to look at it. But be aware that um, being a, a development site that um, we don't pay Amazon for when it's not being used to save the money to do other stuff. So that's so interesting. That is not something I ever would have thought of. Shut the website off, save money. <laughs> Amazon measures everything by milliseconds and transactions. So um, yeah. Crazy. All right. Anything else that we need to be aware of for next steps or any questions from the working group um, in terms of having clarity going forward now? I think just a quick summary is this generic account today is something we hope you guys can use through Sunday. And then we're turning it off and then we'll regroup with you all um, and recommend you sign up for individual accounts down the road once we've gotten the website development further along. Yes, and we will make sure you all, be, due to your wonderful contributions, are first in line to get those accounts as soon as we're ready to do that. Okay. Yeah, and, another, oh, what? relating to your next slide, Carrie, just that when we're finally all back and hanging out together in person mode, uh, wherever we end up, I sure would like to buy each of you a libation of your choice for your <laughs> help with us. <laughs> All right, so included in the next steps is uh, everybody get your vaccines so we can go have beer with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I like Until it. Then, wear your masks and stay home. <laughs> Uh, so uh, it sounds like we're, if no other questions from the working group, let me just make that last check. Okay, um, so I will make sure that um, the team behind the scenes has all the notes from today and the, the information from the mentee um, so they can incorporate all of those pieces. Um, I'd like to invite folks to give a, a closing word. It doesn't even need to be a whole thought, just a closing word as we exit today. 
you know, we started the day saying, oh, now Codex is real. It's a thing. And you got to test drive it. Maybe your word is just forbidden. <laughs> but if there's a closing word you want to leave the group with now that you've kind of been able to do your own wizardry with this, I invite you to share it with the group now. Yeah, this was really cool. Thanks for hosting us. Okay, really cool. Fabulous. Yeah, really well done. Thank you. I don't know what the opposite of forbidden is, but I hope that uh, the word next time is access granted. <laughs> <laughs>